Hello dear champions, welcome to the game of the day. Today we are covering XGM Norm Tournament, game between Petros and Ermanes White against Araf Dengla. We are going to see very exciting attacking battle. Let's get started. E4, C5, Knight F3, D6. Sicilian variation, Black is mainly trying to play in the Knight Dwarf, and after Bishop B5 check, White avoids the main theories. There are a lot of options here, we are just going to see how the game will happen. Knight D7. Castle and a6. There is a question to bishop to give it up or to go back. Why is choosing bishop d3 move? It's a strange square in front of the d2 pawn. However, there is an opening idea, which we will see now. We are not going to keep it permanently in this way. Knight f6. White plays c3. We are opening up a square for the bishop. After e6, bishop c2. Now white is ready to go with d4 moves. So those are very interesting positions. Black plays b5. Pawn d4 and bishop b7. White has a little good center, strong pawns, but black is also trying to build some positions, even though being little passive, black has a very solid setup. Rook e1, bishop e7, knight bd2, castle. Both sides brought the pieces into the game and castled properly. Now white chooses the pawn e5 move. I like this choice. White is creating a space advantage on the king side. While attacking, space is an important device and whenever you have it, you have a lot of territory. More about these important concepts we are talking about in our attacking courses. Attack like a weakling and also we'll cover it in attack for the beginners. So pawn takes, pawn takes and knight goes to d5. Now, since we are planning to play on the king side, white is going to bring the pieces. Knight d4 is a very good move. Piece is standing on a central strong position, d6 is sometimes available, and overall is closer to opponent's king. To prevent some sort of unpleasant knight g5 moves, here black decided to play pawn h6. Okay, knight goes to g3, again getting closer to the king. Now h5 will be very annoying square for black. Rook e8. At this moment there were several attacking moves, but rook e8 had a defensive purpose. Now if white is going queen d3 with a mating threats. Knight f8 defends against all of the threats, so it's not working that well. After rook e8, white chose to go for a pawn sacrifice move, white goes h4. We are trying to gain more space, this pawn will be a limiting one if it goes to h5, maybe rook e4, rook g4 will be possible, overall uh, pawn is joining the attack. Well, at this moment black has a choice, capture or not to take. Black decided to capture and from the first view it looks really fine. However, in my opinion, this was a mistake. What's the thing? Now white is getting so many tempos and from this point white player plays just an amazing chess. Let's take a look at the next decisions. Firstly going queen d3, so provoking knight f8 move. What's the point? Knight on d7 was sometimes attacking on e5. And in some occasions, ideas like rook e4, rook g4 were not working, pawn was hanging all the time. Now it's not. So what is good to play? Knight takes, queen takes and rook e4 just going into the game. No good squares for the queen on this side of the board, queen d8 and now white goes knight h5. What's the thing? There is no dark squared bishop for black, so we have this guy. We have a knight on h5, rook g4, and the dark squares could be very vulnerable. Black never wants to play something like g6 in real, because they will weaken this square so much, it will be very very dangerous. For this reason, after knight h5, black goes knight e7, I like the move again. They are trying to mobilize the piece and bring it for the defense. Also, looks logical that after knight e7, white rook on e4 is hanging, and the queen on d3 is under exchange. If we exchange the queens, in the attack, it will be a disaster, attack will be very very much weakened. So is there a concrete way of playing for white here or suddenly the attack is over? Pause the video and think about it. I'm sure you find it. Now white cannot keep the queens out of exchange but we can go rook g4 and if black captures on d3 we take rook g7, king takes and only now bishop takes d3, even though the queens are exchanged. We managed to capture a very important pawn, h6 is hanging, this king is again weak, something like bishop h6, knight f6 could be very dangerous. For this reason, after rook g4, black continued knight f to g6 and of course we keep the queens. White finds the best square in my opinion, queen goes to h3, not on g3 to pressure on the knight which is very well defended, but h3, 
was the trick. As I mentioned, those pawns are in the dark squares, and black couldn't have a defender. Imagine bishop on f8, it would be defending everything. Black here continued. Knight to f5? Seems like defends all the weak pawns, but white finds the way. At this moment, white decides the result of the game, I would say punchline of the game. A beautiful sacrifice, how to play. Just pause the video and figure it out. Here we do not capture bishop h6 because just knight takes h6, we don't have continuations. However, after knight f5, we can play knight takes g7. At the moment, king g7 is losing. This is not what happened in the game. Because of bishop takes, pawn takes and queen h6 check. King's only square is to go on g8 and we have another beautiful tempo, bishop to g5. Now queen is under attack. For example, if Blake is going queen d7, we go bishop f6 and checkmate is unstoppable. However, I have a quick question. If after bishop g5, black decides to take on g4, what would you do? Because now if we take, black will have a bishop, rook and a knight against our queen. Could be questionable. So how to play here? Pause the video and think about it once again. I know, I know you found it. Bishop goes to f6. Oh, I'm sorry, I put it in the wrong position. At this moment, after a bishop g5, if black is capturing, our bishop goes to f6. Now queen g7 is mating threat, so we don't take the queen. We just go for a mate, which is unstoppable. So if queen takes f6, it's different. Pawn takes. Our pawn goes closer to the king, and again, the mating idea is winning the game. For this reason, after knight takes g7, black has to take with the knight. And white captures queen h6. Now, we sacrificed a piece for a pawn, however, black king has only few defending pieces. What's the good news? We have many attackers and it's very difficult for black to bring more resources in the defense. Once again, in the attack course, we are covering many these kind of concepts throughout. So I really recommend you to check it out if you feel uncomfortable when attacking. Okay, so now g6 is hanging. Black wanted to defend something in advance. They play queen c7. Now, if we take on g6, pawn takes, maybe rook takes, queen already defends on g7 spot. So this is not the best way to continue the attack. After queen c7, white needs to bring more pieces. The inactive piece on bishop on c1, how will you activate it? Think about the best value of out of this bishop uh, in our position. What to play? And again, again the dark squares. We go bishop g5. Now bishop f6 is a big threat, knight will be hanging, so black needs to prevent it. They captured the pawn on e5, which seems very reasonable. Bishop f6 is not working. However, this queen is not permanently staying on this e5 square. White here continues pawn f4. Queen has to go back. Let me quickly mention that queen e2 check doesn't bring any benefits. King h2, this king can never get any checks. There is pawn f5 move, which will open the bishop and capture on g6. Also, bishop f6 threat coming. Well, it's also lost, what happened in the game is losing as well. After f4, black tried to go queen to d6, in the reason after bishop f6, have queen f8 as a defense. For a second, black is trying to hold. First of all, white can play now. Bishop takes, pawn takes, rook takes, and this is very, very good. Rook e7 is though available and can try to hold the position. Instead of going for this, after queen f8, white can play so well. For those of you who know the mating matador course about mating opponent's king, could be a little familiar with these kind of ideas. Now, pause the video and finish the game. How to win here for white. Giving you a little more time. So, hoping you found rook h4. Now we have a simple threat, yeah, queen h7 checkmate. How to defend? Well, only way is to get rid of the rook on h4, but queen h7 is mating. This is not happening in the game. After rook h4, black played knight h5, hoping after rook h5 and queen takes h6, rook takes h6, at least exchange the queens. Even though this bishop rook pair, maybe after something like king f2, rook h1, rook h8 will be mating, we can play way stronger. After knight h5, we take queen back to h5. Now queen h7 is coming, queen h8 is coming, beautiful mate. And if knight h4, again queen h7 is winning. So for this reason, after queen takes h5, black player resigns. 
White in this game played a very healthy attack, step by step I would say keeping many many good attacking concepts. It was a good one to learn and I hope you enjoyed it with me together. Thank you for watching, Jim Gabuizan was here with you and I'm going to see you in our next videos. Bye bye.